Hey guys! So today we're going to be doing a video that nobody really requested. And that is we are going to be walking around and I'm going to show you how I would propagate a bunch of different kinds of plants. And I'll be showing you how I take cut the cutting and then my preferred method for rooting that variety of plant. So I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. As always, please watch this video all the way through. It is very helpful to me and leave some sort of engagement, thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment. Let's just get into it. And of course, first things first, we're gonna need some something to cut with. So I'm just using a uh, kid scissors. <gasps> We need to disinfect them, so I just have this Tammy Taylor spray disinfectant from my old nail days. So I'm just going to give them a good spritzing and then wipe them off. I didn't even used to do this and I never have had it really a problem, but just better safe than sorry, especially if you're cutting more of your uncommon plants or your like plants you extra love. You don't want to risk them getting infection. Of course, if you're going to get, if your plant is going to get some sort of infection, it's going to happen to the one you love the most. There's like melted crayon on these child scissors. <laughs> We're all clean. Let's go cut some things. Let's go cut a lot of plants. I guess the first plant I'm going to show you is a Kalanchoe. This is a donkey ear Kalanchoe. I don't know the technical term for it. I just know it as a donkey ear. Kalanchoe typically get their uh, new plant babies on their leaves. So that's how I'm going to go ahead and propagate this guy is just by taking taking off the little babies. So we'll find the biggest one. I do like to wait for them to get um, like decently sized. And I'm just going to with my fingers take the plant off like as close to the tip leaf as I can so that I am pulling off some of the roots. Can you see? Can you see? Okay, so I just have this little vessel with a very not wide narrow <laughs> that's the word top and i just have it filled all the way to the top with water i'm just gonna put this in there like so so that the roots are touching the water i used to get these little glass containers from the di but where the di hasn't been open and i've been propagating a lot i have started getting them on amazon so i will link these in the description box i'll link a few of my favorite propagation vessels in the description box if you want to try some of them out for yourself. I get a lot of use out of them and they are fairly inexpensive. So I think this was about the same size as that one when I put it in here. But look, now it once it's in the water, um, it will form these white roots. I am going to let this sit in here a little bit longer and then I'll go ahead and pot and soil. I'm just waiting for the roots to be a about an inch long. I just change the water every couple of weeks or as I think about it and make sure that they are getting adequate sunlight. And then I'll go ahead and just pot it into soil like regular. Okay, next up is a ZZ plant. In this case, I'm doing my Raven ZZ plant. These you can of course separate by the individual little stems. So when you repot, you can just take out one of the little stems, but you can also propagate these by cuttings, which is actually how I prefer to do it. So let me find the one that I want. I kind of want to propagate this tiny little guy right here. It just has the two leaves. I just think it's really cute and small. So all I'm going to do is just cut as close to the base as I can. Let it dry a little bit. So basically what I like to do, I don't know if this is like a sciencey thing. I know people do this with succulents, but I'm going to let the tip kind of callus over. And if you don't want to do that, you can always just dip it in cinnamon or rooting hormone. And that will actually, so that they're not, it's not going to get any like bacterial infections. Is that what it's called? I think in plant terms. Mm, I don't think that's what it's called, but that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, so you can go ahead and do that, but I do actually prefer to root these in water, which I know sounds really weird because these guys don't drink a lot of water. So I don't know, you wouldn't think to like propagate them that way. You'd think to just like stick them in dirt and you totally can do that, but I like to put them in water. So I'm going to go get my little container and show you where I'll set it up. Okay. So the container I'm using for this one is actually the exact same as the one I showed you for the Kalanchoe. So I just fill it up with water. I'm actually going to dump out a little bit. Um, when you're filling up your containers with water, you don't want the water to be touching the actual leaves. So yeah, just fill it up accordingly. And then I do like to have the thin tops so that they can sit in it like this. They'll form a few little roots out of the end and then it'll start to get, oh, what's it called? Oh, I forget the word. 
It's like a potato looking thing. I can't remember the actual word for it, but that's what stores its water. Once it develops one of those is when I'll go ahead and pot it up. So it does take quite a long time. This baby takes months to root. So be forewarned, the longer process wants to propagate. <laughs> but I am actually just going to keep this baby here in a north facing window. As a general rule of thumb, I like to give my propagations one level higher of light than I would normally give like a, what's the word? Why can't I think of any words today? Ugh. I do like to give my propagations one level higher of lighting than I would give the developed plant. So as an example, this mother plant that I just took this cutting from is on the other side of this room. So it gets very diffused low light. So I'm giving it one level up by putting it right by the window. So you do want to make sure that your cuttings are getting adequate lighting or that is when you're going to not get any root growth or when you're cutting is just going to rot. Be mindful about that. This little cutting looks so cute. Oh, I love it. Okay, so next up I'm going to show you how I propagate string of hearts. So this method I'm using actually I didn't come up with. I have seen so many people posting about it this year and this is the first year I've heard about it. So I'm sorry, I don't know who actually came up with this, but it works like a freaking charm. Um, so the bottom of my string of hearts is getting a little bit sparse and the new growth is coming in kind of small. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut like where it starts getting sparse. So I have all my little cuttings. Oh, ignore the cat food and the dirty um, countertop. Now I'm going to go to each of the individual cuttings and cut off the extra or each strand. And where there's leaves, I'm going to cut the um, random stem that's taking up space. And again, so I end up with something like this. Um, this is actually called the butterfly method because it looks like a butterfly. Like imagine this is the caterpillar or whatever, the body, and then these are the wings. So you end up with something like this. I'm going to go ahead and do that to the rest of the stems. Okay, so I ended up, those are, I'm all just going to get rid of. I ended up with this many little cuttings. Let me show you what I'll do with it now. I'm just going to take any little containers. I'm going to set my little cuttings aside. I'm going to put sphagnum moss in the bottom of this wet sphagnum. You can also do this in soil. I just have a thing for sphagnum lately. Sphagnum. It's because I like to say it. I'm just going to pack it in here pretty good. Pack her in. You can also use like Tupperware. Like you can see right here, I have some with Tupperware. I'll show you this in a second. Or the propagation box that I have talked about so much on my channel. I did a video about it recently. Uh, you can just throw it in one of those, but I currently don't have any free space in my propagation boxes. So that's why I'm using this. So I have it like packed down pretty well, spread it out evenly. You do want to do this in a container that has a little bit of a dip so you can water your plants. Each of my little butterflies. So there's one of the little butterflies. Can you see? And I'm just going to lay them flat like so. I'm going to do that for all of them. Just lay them flat on top. You don't really have to bury them in or anything. If you use soil, you need to kind of bury them in a little bit, but not too much. You don't want too, too much of the leaf to be like covered in the whatever, whatever stuff you're using. The whatever substrate. Is that the word? No, that's not the word. I don't know what the word is. You guys know. I don't know words. What are words? So we end up with something like this with just a bunch of random plants sitting in the sphagnum. And what you're gonna do is once the sphagnum dries out, you're just gonna get it wet, rewater it, and your plants are going to grow. Let me show you the ones I started. I think it's been about a month now that I've had these other ones propagating in this container. You guys, this method works like a charm. These all started out like those little butterfly cuttings. I can't even pull them out. Look at these roots. This is the cool thing about using like Tupperware or a clear thing. You can really see the root growth. Hopefully this shows a little better. So these are the two original leaves. So here's the two ends of the stem, the cutting I took. Did form a little, one of those little potato things. I forget what it's called. Maybe it's called a rhizome. I could be wrong about that, but it's like the little potato thing where they store water and it has a root growing now. But what will also happen with this method is you will end up with new stem growth. Whoops with new stem growth. So that just kind of comes out 
um, from the potato thing. You guys, I'm so not helpful. I don't know anything. Yeah, so you can kind of see that's what ends up happening. And you end up with this more lush growth. So all of these were just individual cuttings. You can see they are growing doing their thing and basically what I'll do now I'm not going to pot this up yet I'm just enjoying it too much in here right now I'm just gonna take this whole thing out once I'm ready to pot my plant and put it on top of regular soil in a pot and let it grow that way and then the roots will start to grow down into the soil so yeah that is the system I use to propagate string of hearts and as you can see it works very very well so we are now in the master bathroom the one with the more plants now i'm going to show you how i propagate a monstera adansonii and this is actually how i would propagate any really like philodendron -y, pothos e plant that grows leaves like this on the stem where there's kind of a gap and then a leaf will form and then there's a gap and another leaf will form and there are aerial roots at every leaf so i don't want to cut too much of this guy because i'm really liking the way it's growing right now, but this vine is just kind of going nowhere. I'm going to find the last leaf I want to stay on the plant. So I don't want to cut this one. I'm just going to go ahead and cut right above that. Give it about an inch of stem and cut. So there's the cut. I kind of have all this extra stem here. I am going to make another diagonal cut so that I end up with about an inch of stem. And you can leave it like this. Or what I prefer to do if I want to get more like bang for my buck, more plant out of the cutting, I'll go ahead and cut again on the leaf. And then we want to get rid of all this extra stem. I'm going to cut about an inch from the next aerial root. And these two stems you can just kind of throw away. They're not going to do anything unless there's an auxiliary bud, which there is not, or a node, which there is not. Oh gosh, there are some dry leaves, okay? So not every single leaf you go to propagate is going to form. So um, I do end up with some garbage, garbage cuttings. Should be better about taking them out of here, but you know what? It is what it is. So yeah, not every single root, every single cutting you take is going to root, but I just like to put my little individual cuttings in Adansonii and Pothos and Philodendron cuttings in water, unless it's a velvety Philodendron. We'll get into that in a minute. Ah, they're very tangled because like I said, they've been in here for such a long time. I need to pot these up soon. Uh, so here is a cutting is just like the cutting I showed you today. Look at how much bigger this leaf is anyway. So yeah, similar, similar cuttings. They both have a little bit of stem and then one single leaf and um, a node. So that is what we end up with. It has formed a few little tiny roots and it is getting a new growth point as well, which is really exciting. So how I would go ahead and pot these up, which I'm gonna to have to do soon. I'm not doing it today. I'm just not in the mood to pot. And I don't like to force myself to pot stuff unless I'm in the mood because I want it to stay a hobby and not feel like a chore. I like to get a good inch or two of root growth, depending on the size of plant for these individual leaves. I would wait probably for the roots to get about that long or until it gets starts getting a new growth point. Then that's a sign for me. I can go ahead and pot it up. I would just pot this up in soil and I would use a very airy soil mix. If you don't want to like mix your own soil, I'll link a couple of my favorite soils in the description box if you want to pick them up and do it for yourself. I do like very chunky airy mixes. The two soil mixes I use straight out of the bag. Black gold cactus mix and also black gold orchid mix. So both of those are pretty airy options that I would recommend for potting up cuttings like this, you do want to keep it very airy so they're not um, getting rot. They need to have adequate airflow or that's how you end up with propagation with rot on your propagated cuttings once you move them from water to soil. And you also want to keep the soil damp for the first little while that the cutting is in it. You don't want to let it dry out all the way or it will burn the new root growth. Keep that in mind. I hope that's helpful. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you can see like they do end up getting some very, very substantial root growth in water. Oh, and actually I'll show you potting, putting the two cuttings into a little propagation thing. I'm actually going to put them in this 
I got this on Amazon also, and I've been waiting for the perfect thing to put in it. I think it's gonna look really cute on my bathtub right here. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the two little things, black like so. <laughs> I am going to take my two little cuttings. Like I said, you should wait for the ends to callus over. Do as I say, not as I do. If you have issues with root rot, definitely wait for them to dry a little bit, but I usually just stick them in here. I have hard water and I think the minerals in the water where I live prevents a lot of the rot issues I have. It's not like every single time I sometimes still get rot, but more often than not, I end up not with rot. Anyway, now I'm just gonna put my little cuttings in and that's it. Really easy, simple as that. Look at how hard the water is where I live. That's disgusting. Ooh, okay, and then I'm gonna put this. I'll actually end up probably moving that, but for now that's fine. Oh uh, yeah, so onward. For more velvety plants, I cut the same way, but I propagate them a different way. So I'm gonna show you on my philodendron micans. This is she. The back's a little bit sparse. I need to like rotate this. In fact, I'm gonna do that now. Gosh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and Ooh, look at that. That was like not even sticking in the soil. Here's a little cutting. I'm gonna go ahead and root. It has a node right there. I'm gonna just cut right below that node, give it a little bit of a space. Um, I'm just gonna propagate this one as a stem. So you can definitely do stem cuttings. You can do individual leaf cuttings. Individual leaf cuttings are going to take a lot longer to get long, you know, but they will give you the look of a more full plant. Yeah, I do usually do individual leaf cuttings. I'm gonna cut back here. Um, because this is a very small little stem, you could just propagate it, stick this in whatever method you want to use to propagate it. Like I said, I'll show you in a minute what I do. Or you can you can do what we did with the um, Adamsonii and cut each of the individual little leaves. So there's a leaf, one cutting, and it, make sure it has a node. It has to have a node or you're not going to end up with a place that can have a new growth point or a root. I do prefer to root velvety philodendrons plants in sphagnum moss. Sphagnum is very easy for me to keep track of. Um, it holds moisture really well, but it does not compact down the way soil does. I do like to propagate in my little propagation boxes each individual little cutting and stick it in the sphagnum. It doesn't have to be in there too much. Can you even see that? No, because it's like the tiniest of tiny cuttings. This is a, oh, there's hair on it because I put it on the carpet. This is a Mikan's cutting I took a little while ago. When you're rooting things in sphagnum, I know after, once you're ready to pot it up, there can be moss stuck onto the roots. What I do is I just remove as much sphagnum moss as I can without too much force. So what's easy to pull off, I take off. If it's not easy to take off, I just leave it on and I'll pot it in with the rest of the plant. And I've had good luck with that. I haven't had any issues. So so there's one of our cuttings. I just am gonna stick her in like that for all of our little cuttings. I guess I'll show you a little bit of a closer up of this guy. Yeah, there's the root. And I've only had this in here for about a week now. I actually have you on my kid's diaper pail. You know, it is what it is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take this this baby plant out. What I'm going to do is take my scissors. I wish this leaf wasn't in the way. Maybe there's a, yeah, I'm gonna just show you on this larger one over here. It'll be a little bit easier, I think, is I'm going to kind of move soil out of the way from around that, the plant I'm taking the cutting from and pull it out. I'm gonna grab as far down on the plant as I'm able on the baby plant I'm trying to pull and pull it out. Oops. So yeah, it breaks it off the mother plant and I end up with these roots. You can also cut it if it's not easy to pull out. Just try to cut it as far down as possible. So this is what we are left with. So I'm actually gonna pot this up in this pot. It's a little bit big, but this is an easy plant, so I'm not too worried about it being in a bigger pot. There's also no drainage. Really easy as that. Um, this guy, I am not going to keep the soil moist. I'm actually going to keep it pretty dry. <gasps> Cute. Okay, yeah, so that's how I would propagate plant, like succulent plants that form the little babies. That's also how you propagate a Pilea peperomoides.
Yeah, so my baby is awake from his nap, so I think I'm out of time. I've kind of jabbered on. I hope you learned something from this video or it was like a little bit helpful or so. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye! A oh, little Kaiser update. He's getting so good at holding his head. And he needs some big muscles to hold this head because he's in the 98th percentile for head size. Huh, you got a big head. You got a big head. Oh, he's so strong. He's so strong. He has bald spots in the back now. I love his little mullet. Looks nice, dude. What you looking at? I love him so much. <laughs>